Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 30, 46. Sorry about that guys. Yes, this is the season review of Manchester United season of 2021. But of course guys, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, remember to smash that like button, remember to share because why? Sharing Ivorian Spice is caring, guys. And of course, guys, if you're new to the show and you're thinking, what the hell is this? This is the catch-up of Volume 46 where we catch up between me, you, amongst friends. Of course, we look at what we reflect on, of course, the previous match. And we're not going to be reflecting on that previous match because it's a review show. We talk about the latest and hottest debate. And of course, we look at match previews. And as is the end of the season, guys, I like to say, boy, congratulations to Manchester City for winning the Euro UEFA Champions League, beating our noisy neighbours, Manchester City, which I got to say, ha ha, ha Manchester City, you must be pissed now going into the finals and I know that Pep is so, so pissed off, you know, he's gone all this way. And he's thinking, rah, like, I thought I can take Man City to win the Champions League and take them to European glory, especially doing it with Barcelona. But he realised that he can only do it with Barcelona, not with Manchester City. And, of course, Pep doing his thing in the final. You know how he loves to tinker, guys? You're thinking, rah, he started off a team without no hold midfield, no Rodri, no Fernandinho. And, damn, he paid for it. Big up Chelsea, two times champions, you know. I'm, I'm pleased for them because the noisy neighbours don't get to win anything. It's so damn pleasing. Let me just bring in Amok as he's ready to log in. Amok, what are you saying? Yeah, I'm good, you know. Yes. Oh, really, sorry about the delays. I'm just rushing quick. Yes, yes. You're just rushing anyway. But as, as I was saying, guys, of course, we are about to get kicked in into this show. If you're watching across Twitch and if you're watching across Periscope, make sure you get yourself involved in the comments as well. If you're watching across YouTube, make sure you get yourself involved. As always, remember to share as well, as, as well, and also hit and also press that like button and smash and subscribe, guys. Let's go straight into Manchester United's season. It's been, let's say, an interesting season where Manchester United started off. Badly, um, not having a preseason, as some may use that as an excuse, not having a preseason. Where I think that shouldn't be as an excuse because everyone faced a difficult start towards the start of the season of the Premier League. Manchester United starting horribly, losing to Palace, lose, getting spanked by Tottenham. It's Tottenham, of course, um, winning it by luck against Brighton in what full time after the whistle got blown. And then the penalty came out after his VL decision. Manchester United, particularly 15th at one point at the start of the season, then covering up pace. And then at one point of the season, coming first, by that time we would have got we got knocked out. The Champions League went straight into the um, Europa League. Manchester United getting knocked out the Carabao Cup in the semi finals, failing to reach a final. With Oli getting knocked out in the FA Cup to Leicester. But Manchester United also making it to a final for the first time, finishing second. But unfortunately, Oli at the wheel we was unable to win a trophy. We were unable to win the Europa League, the second tier division of European football, which says a lot. It's been an interesting season for Manchester United overall, man. A couple of players did well. We've had a season where we've had to juggle with, with who's the number one goalkeeper. We also had a season of McFred, no Van de Beek, playing the whole entire season, getting snubbed. <sighs> what a season we've had, you know. Mark Rashford, dipped out performance, is always injured. Paul Pogba missed a bit of, his period of the season. Bruno Fernandes scoring, stat padding as usual, doing his best. Magdalof, it's been interesting. It's been interesting, I have to say. Um, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, 
You've got Luke Shaw, who had one of the best seasons, I have to say, so far in his career, ever since he's come. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the season overall, it's been a shit season for Manchester United. It's been a shit season. Coming second, of course, finishing 10 points better than last season. Seven points behind fourth place this season, which doesn't mean it all. 10 points plus from first place against Man City and not winning anything, getting knocked out, like I said before, semi-finals, quarter-finals and losing the final. I don't know. It has been a poor season for me. The only positive thing is that we um, finished second and that's it. Amok, before I get to you, big up Darren, who's in the cup. He's out here saying, make Bruno captain for starters. And of course... Would have been better if we had won a cup. Yes, Darren, it would have been a better season if we actually won a cup. Amok, let's have your take on your opinion over Manchester United's season. I think it's been an average season, like definite average season. I believe we should have done more based on the players that we've got and not just the players that we've got based on the club itself, the reputation of the club and that. I know when you lose a manager like Ferguson, it's hard for things to get back to normal. It's really hard. We've seen with other teams, Liverpool took forever to build the club. But we're talking about new era of football. We've seen Chelsea just came from nowhere, start winning trophies. We've seen Man City came from nowhere, start winning trophies. It's the new era of football, the things that you got to change. I believe the club itself, needs to change certain things. But say the, the football in general for the whole season, it's been average, sometimes below average. And like the games that I felt like we should have won, but we end up losing. And when I say below average, how are we meant to win trophies or how are we meant to even compete for the title if you lose that much game at home? Because every team that won the Premier League title have had really good home record and very good um, 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 record. Our home record was really, really, really terrible. I know people stay on beating or beating, but we didn't win all the games, you know. We drew some of these games. And I still believe the manager, he did all right. We'll but, get to the manager, but let's no, talk about this the, is, Yeah, the, the, the club itself, the, he did all right because we came second, but I just think, in terms of everything, like the the the, the cups that you said we came off, like the FA Cup, the Cordoba, um, um, Carabao. the Champions League, the Carabao, the the Champions League, that hurt. You see us come from the Champions League. I know people say it was a tough group. No, we all united. It should have been us in um, PSG, any other team in that comp which we shouldn't compete for any other team. They gave us hope and they broke our heart in the last few games. It's just like, like I said, that's just an average. I can't really say fantastic season because even if we won the Europa, it would have been, for me, in my point of view, should have been like average season still. I think we had the average, average se season. We just go a few players who tick the box that actually excel. Like Pogba ha had injuries. Rashford in and out. Like some games is excellent. Some games is all right. Um, Greenwood. I think he's just gonna get better. In the beginning of the season, that thing that happened with the England, the, the England with England, and that actually had a little effect on him. But I'm glad to see him back, like coming to score goals, doing what he usually does. So I'm I'm happy to see that from him. I'm happy to see. With, I'm happy for some of the players, though. Not all of them. Like you mentioned before, we've got Van der Beek sitting on the bench for a whole season. We've got McTominay and Fred playing week in week out i don't get it uh, it's been average it's sometimes below average it, it has been an uh, uh, i would say yeah uh, if you feel like it's below average i don't think it's been the best season so far and um, big up darren who's saying that we need a cdm and a forward also say that we need to improve in beating the top six teams as we've done <laughs> really poor against them we True. couldn't even beat arsenal and the game that which lost which lost us the Champions League was the one in Russia against Denver Bar. Last <laughs> said that we need to split up McFred and McTominay. And let's talk about the, the fact that 
we was unable to beat uh, the top six. Yeah. We only won two games. And for us, to, for, like I said, when we was in the title race back then when Ferguson was was around, it was very important to beat the top six because the top six sets a marker because, of course, you will beat your the rest of bread and butter. You will beat them. But it's most importantly beating your rivals. And this season, it's, I don't know what happened this season, but in terms of being our rivals, we flopped. We really, really flopped in big games. We, we, in big games, this is where we're supposed to show whether we're a good team or not and whether we have the confidence to to thrive in big games. And in big games this season, especially in the quarterfinals and also in the semifinals and sports, especially in the finals, including that, we show that we don't have it mentally. Um, I, I want to ask you a question. Is it, is it a playoff mental thing or is this, is this the manager that the way he sets things up? Because I don't know how you felt about the way Manchester United was unable to beat the top six. And I think it's the manager because we've seen with previous man or, or previous managers, they actually compared with the top six. When Mourinho came second, he didn't lose this much game to the top six. He won a lot, even though he lost some, but he won a lot. It just shows the manager don't know how to play. Like his system is different. And I, I would tell you the players did not really perform. I think the Tottenham game must have really, really shocked, shocked them. They didn't expect to lose that much against Tottenham. So I think losing some of our top games was just inevitable because we were playing too safe. Like we've mentioned it time and time over and over again in this in this show. Like we've been playing safe. We've been playing safe. Sometimes you need to forget about safe and just go life itself. It's risk. Sometimes risk everything. Like show us like we are united. Like it's good when you see your team play good and lose, sometimes you take, you be, you be like, okay, do you know what, I can't, uh, even as much as hard for you to take, but sometimes it, it's understandable. But if to watch a team play um, 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 really, really poor and lose the match, it's painful. And that's, I think, we went through a lot with the top six. We did not play good and we lost the games really poorly and it hurts. The only team that I felt like we did well against is Man City and I don't know why, but only been doing number against Man City since they came. Yeah, definitely. And, and and another interesting thing that Diane was talking about was the the rise of McFred, man. <laughs> McFred really really was prominent throughout the whole entire season with the for Doddy Van der Beek um not being able to break that McFred duel, that fusion, which just at times you would have thought I'm surely Donny Van der Beek should be playing more often in that double pivot role as well because he can play in that and role. And the last game that he played in the Premier League with um, Matic, uh, with Matic, he was he was impressive. He was turning, get, getting the ball, twisting players up, keeping the ball moving, and all that stuff, keeping the ball ticking. And of course, Manchester United did win that game. And um, what do you think about this whole McFred situation? Because is this is this a thing where it really hampered our season in terms of going forward and breaking lines? Do you think that had an impact? It did have a massive impact on the season. We've just said it. We did not win that much home games. And we didn't win against the top six. We did win games with McTominay and Fred playing together. But just that combination ain't good enough. The creative side of the team was very, very poor. For me, you're using two holding defenders, like I call them def not midfield, I call them defenders, because you're using them as defender to protect your top your, your back foot. But yet still keep conceding goals. I don't understand how that works. If you're trying to protect your back four, protect it. Let's concede less goals. But we did, I don't think, to be honest with you, that's the to see them two play there and you move Pogba to the right to the left, I that shocked me. Mm -hmm. I was just impressed with the way Pogba played because he's a quality player. Like he he said himself, put me anywhere you want to put me, I believe I can get used to it. You get what I mean? But do the same thing in reverse to test McTominay and Fred, the ability. Do the same thing. Put them there and see if they can do that. And that let you know that this player is not cut to play this position like this. And you go on, you go on, on, on Van Der Beek on the bench. You've got someone that can pass. Someone he can read the game. Someone, he if he sinks in with uh, Pogba, Bruno, with all these players we've got, 
it would be good and yet still i felt like you failed to give this individual opportunity but you stuck with mark tommy and, uh, and fred i just don't get it and at the end of the day we all say how how says it how this isn't finished if these two players were really that good i mm. promise you they would have helped the manager to win the trophy which is true they would have helped the manager at least win a trophy or compete with Man City or whatever other team for the Premier League. Because you know midfielders create massive impact in teams. And to be honest with you, other teams talking about these big names. We've got midfielders, but manager do not to use them. We've got they even know about Mark Fred. It's like a thing. I don't even know it after was just you. But after the end of the season, everyone's saying McFred. So that's the thing. Everyone knows about that. To, to and the extent poor. that BT Sports said no McFred today. Like, it's poor. <laughs> it's really poor. It's a poor choice. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is so funny. The fact that I was watching BT Sport, the, the Europa League final, and they said that no McFred today. That's how they know that they, it's, we've been insulting them, you know? And it's not a good thing as well. You know, the McFred. We are united, you know? I don't know if people remember. Like maybe we old. I'm not old enough, but we started supporting this club when we were young. We all united. The prestige, the the culture, the tradition behind this club. Where is it? Where know, is it? Down the drain, apparently. So we long. used to have Roy Kingdom Law, you know, Paul mm -hmm. Scholes. Mm -hmm. Now we got McFred. We have McFred, and we also have. Well, it's like Magdalof, you know. Mag Let me just get what Darren was just saying there. Big up, Darren. It's Darren TV right now. Never should have played Pogba in the middle when he has played his best on the left. The you know, one thing I have to say about that is like, you, you've been crying for Pogba to be playing his right position, yeah? And, and, and you do it in a final where he's not used to playing with McTominay in a double pivot. You're like, we must have just play him on the left then. You, you, you see what I'm saying, Darren? Like, and he played that <laughs> position for a hot sec. <laughs> Yeah, all of a like, sudden, why are you switching it up like you, that? You've never really practiced the whole season playing Pogba in a double pivot with either Fred or McTominay, too tough. And then you've been playing the McFred for the whole season. And when it comes to the final, the most important game of your career, your life, you go and do something completely different and say, you know what? I'm feeling bold. I'm going to go attacking and put Pogba and, and McTominay in midfield. And then he never worked at the end of the day because McTominay, I mean, Fred Pogba wasn't himself in that game. Like, you know, swapping him around, changing his position, left, right, centre, it, it, it can confuse a brother, you know, one day. Like, you know? The reason why people think Pogba plays well on the left because when he goes up, he's got players like Rashford. He, he's got that simple play with. He's got players like Bruno. But in the middle, it's McTominay that creative is that good enough his position is actually poor sometimes in the midfield so Pogba find it hard to play with him that's what I always say if you don't for me Pogba plays with either Matic and Matic is old or you bring Van der Beek give Van der Beek a specific instruction say do you know what I want you to do this do this do this do this but I want you to play with Pogba but I don't know they say McTominay works hard works hard sometimes don't cut it don't cut it at all. Sometimes you go use your initiative, use your ability. Ability, ability counts a lot in football. Ability counts a lot. That's why I keep everyone keep talking about Messi, Neymar. No, they're not, they're not just bullers. They've got great abilities. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Matomani was one of the best players on the on, on the game throughout. But at the same time, he did good things and he also did bad things. You know. His, you know, passes were poor. There. his passes, his poor, passes were poor. In terms of breaking play, again, and so yeah, I saw from, that still. You think that really well, but at the same time, I would like to see McTominay stop breaking the lines, you know, with his passes because that's the one thing that he really needs to improve on. It's just with his passing and distributing. Because I, I love the fact that he gets the ball off players, but it's what he does afterwards that's the problem. True, true, definitely. It has been. And as I was saying, let's move it on to the other situation. <laughs> the whole McFred. I mean, not McFred. I mean, the Magdalof. The season of Victor um, Lindelof and Harry Maguire, of course, it always has been in question, especially with Gary Neville said that. And then Rio Ferdinand says he get, that gives him that partnership is a nightmare. Overall, what did you think of that partnership? Because I, I think uh, it worked at times, you know. Now I see what happens when we don't have a Maguire uh, <laughs> and we throw in a bye. You know, you, you, see, you see, the thing is that you see that Maguire works with someone. 
I've actually realized that he either works with Lindelof or Bay. It's not when Bay is with Lindelof and you know, that you will have some problems. You know, it's a bit shaky compared to when Maguire is there because I I've, I remember seeing Bay and, um, and Maguire and there was stability. Um, and with Lindelof, there's a bit of stability, but Lindelof gets moved too. But what did you think of this whole partnership? Overall? This whole partnership for me is like I said, our season been an average season. And we talking, I'm listening to you. All I can picture in my head is our defenders, Pa. They're not good. Because I still believe Maguire's average defender. But yet still, when he don't play, our defense struggles even more. So which tells you that our defense is Pa. We need to improve our defense. We definitely need to improve the defense. But for the whole season, it's been average. Or I could just let me do me to bias. I would say just above average. The partnership between Maguire and Lindelof, and sometimes it's really, really bad, and we all know why it happens because we play with Zona Marken, and we all seen the mistakes for these defenders from doing the Zona Marken, which don't suit us at all. And he, I think Maguire, been a victim of that. We've seen him got exposed a whole lot of time. Lindelof can move to. I think he actually get moved to. Mm-hmm. Maguire, in the other hand, it's just silly, silly mistakes. Like things that you shouldn't do. That's what, that's what he does. But at the end of the day, him not playing for the last few games, I saw a little bit of um, 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 of his ability that I said, like, you know what, we actually need this guy as much as his poor. Like we were too slow for moving the ball from the our defence. With yeah. Maguire, we move the ball fast. I always thought Lendelof was quicker with the ball. He's good on the ball, but he's actually slow distributing the ball out because he's always under pressure. But Maguire actually helps up with that department there. So I felt like it's for some reason we missed him in the last few games. Yeah, definitely. I definitely feel like we've definitely missed him. And with the, with the players as well, we, um, we will get to your question, Darren, about the signings later on on the, in the show because of course we will look into signs for the following season and we will probably like to see but overall the team's season hasn't been the best it's been a bit shy i don't uh, if anyone thinks that we've improved i don't know if we've improved um we did not improve just in terms of the no. league just the champions league yeah, I hear that. I say I'm just saying we improved slightly in terms of the league. It's just slightly, but it's not a big improvement, a significant improvement compared to the last season and before Mourinho as well. We're, what we're improvement is not, this? See, just really won big. the league five times in a decade. What improvement mm-hmm. is this? It's, I want to see this. Before, it's slight improvement in, in terms no. of the league. In terms of this, overall, see, we shouldn't accept these things. Like I said before, we are united. Why are we settling for chip? See, you just won the champ, uh, the, 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 the Premier League uh, four or five times in, in a decade. That's upsetting. We haven't improved. We cut down on the points, yes, because the it's the same manager and the same players. They had to. Because they, like I said, the only difference between Manchester United and the other team, our players have gelled a little bit. That's why Oli gets that gets to act the way he acts, he can just go sit back, cross his leg, and watch this team play because they jailed. The, the players been with each other for like a year or two. I said two, 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 two years plus, which they should have jailed. So this is the reason why I'm saying like we should we still have to do more. It's not good enough. Improvement by cutting the point, winning no trophy. But a team he was sitting worse on the table. Finish. They still win Champions League and won the biggest trophy that we got kicked out of. Like, and we call that improvement. For any team that improved this season, it's, it's Chelsea. Man City is constant. They just on improvement. We haven't improved. We need to improve. We really, really need to improve. And as you can see, there, Darren says that we shouldn't be expecting this, but I. But uh, if we don't get a process, we we will go back to square one and give him another season. Then, of it, it doesn't ch- change. Get rid. Mm. 
which I which I get, which I get, I get as well, man. I really do. But in terms of Manchester United, in terms of this process, Darren, is there a process at the end of the day? Because yeah. just, just look at the way um the glazers are running things. Exactly. The way they've hired these type of people in position. Um, having Darren Fletcher, who knows football, which is good, but lacking the experience in the role and the expertise in the role. And we had um, we had sure. Darren Myrtle. People, people forget that his name as well, which makes it it's funny. I don't even know his name, you know. Forget I always got ask someone. People forget our director of football's name, the most important person in the club now that makes that's supposed to make things happen between the the owners and also the football connecting everything with the managers. People can't even remember his name. It, it is funny. It's like it's like it means he's nobody in the game. He's he's nobody. This is what happens when you're a nobody. But they call us United, though. It's the but that, that, that's but I'm club. saying Darren, that is the process. You know, we've had people that we don't even know. People don't hear sometimes they even know nothing about football. And we we we've, we've even these people has even offered people that like buy a new contract, and you're thinking, and you're there thinking. It was time to let by leave, but these are the people that are making the football decision again. Same people making the football decision before are still making the football decision now. It so makes it hard to bring in a, de a proper defender. It makes it hard because you got defenders on wages. You got to think about the financial aspect as well. It's so you can't just process. buy. You, you just can't buy defenders. You got to let go of someone and bring someone else. Yes, it's the only process that um, Darren was talking about, not the glazing. Only, only his process. <laughs> All this process. You know, we will see. He's got one more season left, and we'll see if the process. Because I believe one more season should at least allow you to see um, what. How what many the seasons entire, did, the, did all towards the end of the process? What it looks like, because that's what we would like. To, I know it's taking him so long. I know that other managers, it takes them six months, three months. But again, people will say that Oli hasn't been backed. I, I, I said he's been given money, but he hasn't been given. The players that probably he wanted his number one choices, second or third choices. But he, I didn't think he did go for them and say, yeah. But in terms of, you, you see, people can argue that, which we'll get into later on. People can argue that um, if you have a style of play, you're your coach and you can improve individuals and improve this team overall. I understand that. But let's, let's, let's put that on hold for now. And of course, we're 30 minutes into the remember, guys. Remember to smash that like button, remember to share as well. Make sure you get yourself involved, just as the way Darren is getting himself involved as well. But we we, we need to move on to um because of course we've discussed if it's a good season or not. Um, in terms of players so far, let's look at players, the most improved players in your books. I mean, who do you think has been your most improved player? Because in my personal opinion. The most improved player so far that's really been impressing me has been um, Luke Shaw. Everyone can say Bruno Fernandes, but it is what it is. But let me just wait until Ems is about to log in and let me just bring him in. So I'm late. So I'm late. Oh. We got Ems in the car. Let me see which one is the best. And you, are, you can, can get that position well, or do you want me to put it like this? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Let me flip, let me flip it this way. Sorry. Yo, you, yo, you like that? Shit. Sorry, excuse my language. Uh, <laughs> it's all right, bro. Yeah, but I prefer if you're gonna do like that, I prefer the light. Yeah, yeah, cool. Anyway, but yes, as I was saying, guys, um Luke Shaw, I believe. But first of all, before we get into it, let me just hear Ems's opinion first of Manchester. Let's not it's not the manager, it's the smash night season overall. What do you think? Of Manchester United season overall, we're gonna get into the managers and the players later on. <laughs> stop laughing, no, <laughs> Darren! Don't right. stop laughing. You see, I have to break up in parts. Like, oh, but if we're talking about overall, I would say it's okay. But I think if we don't win the league, actually, if we don't win a trophy, you don't win the league. Really and truly, for what I remember, that's a failure for my United Football Club. But if we're talking about Oli, Oli, Oli era, then as people say, it's progress, isn't it? But for me, it's okay. 
but it's not it's not great, but it's okay. <laughs> it's not great, but it's okay. But yes, back back to the most improved player. I think that Luke Shaw has been the most improved player. Big up Darren who says that he thinks that Luke Shaw and I believe he's trying to say Dean Henderson as well has been one of the most improved players. Most improved, I would Luke say. Luke Shaw. Yep, go on. To be fair, uh, do you know what? Yeah, I don't want to hear Luke, but what we're saying, Luke Shaw, this should have been Luke Shaw the first two seasons we got him. No disrespect. Obviously, I know he had an injury, but I feel like this should be expected. This should be the level. Do you know what I mean? But um, I would say, I think, even though I don't rate him, because he's not good on the ball, I think Wamba Saka's improved, like, better on, better, getting better going forward. But if we're going to go all in all, then I would say Luke Shaw. For sure. For sure, for sure. Luke Shaw has looked like he's been the most improved. And they did win um, Players Player of the Year for Manchester United, not, not for the Premier League. Yeah. Um, what about you? Um, who do you think has been the most improved player so far, in your opinion? I, w- I'm, I totally agree with you guys. You know, if we say in general, look, sure, this season he's been brilliant. Like, he did madness. But like M said, he's been at the team for a hot sec. So, we expect this type of, of performances from him anyways. But I also agree with M. Wombo Soccer. I very inspired, you know, a few weeks ago, I told you should so improve. And you actually agreed with me. You said, but bad people think he's too average. Or he, he's not good enough to go forward. And I said, I've seen glimpses that he's getting better going forward. So for me, that aspect there, he's been better. But even Greenwood, in, from the beginning of the season to the green at the end of the season, there was a little bit of improvement. Like I said, if you are a minority and you get... You go through what he went for the beginning of the season, and you were young, um, young adult. Yeah. It affects you differently, and if you get him in, so for him to come back and start doing what he does, big up to him. I think that for me, I was imp- I was impressed with him, because that stuff breaks people down a lot of time. That's true. That's true. Let me just get some comments flowing. Got Passion Merchant, which I love that name. <laughs> Says, would you guys sell? Pogba and Marshall this summer. Um, do you rate Coleman? And also, what about Bazuma? Big got red tinted views. You know, can't wait to bring your face on this channel. You know, hopefully you by next season. But most improved this season, Luke Shaw, one hundred percent. We've got Darren and McTominay has improved as well, and he scored loads of goals. Um, we've got Pash Merchant that says McTominay plays like a striker lost in midfield. <laughs> and if Greenwood kept it in his pants, he would have done a lot of better this season. <laughs> you would have scored some more goals, in it? I reckon so. <laughs> but He's yeah, a young yeah. star. Big up to you guys as well. Those who are watching, there's about 27 people of you guys watching. Remember to smash that like button. Remember to share. And also make to get yourself involved in the conversation. What? And we move, we're going to move up to the least improved Least impressive player, least impressive player this season. Um, <laughs> I, think one, I think they can, I think they could, in my opinion, one it's just one individual, one, in, my, in my opinion, anyway. Well, mm-hmm. we'll see what everyone else says, but I think I'm gonna watch my answer. So. <laughs> least I, very impressive player, I, can't wait, I can't wait to hear yours, though. I the least impressive yours. player, I'm not gonna lie to you, you know, <laughs> the least impressive player this season has for me has to go to Daniel James, man. <laughs> Every time he comes on, I've never seen a winger that cannot beat a man. I've never seen a winger that tries a trick and falls on the floor so often, you know. I've never seen a man that's tried to bust a chip one-on-one and misses all the time, you know. I've never seen a man that always been in doubt and just low in confidence in himself, especially when he misses the ball, loses the ball, gives the ball away and looks at everyone. He has, he gives that look to everyone that he knows that everyone knows that he knows his shit. And that, that's the thing. That's the thing that really fucks me. The weakest because link. When you, have, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you know you're the weakest link and you look at everyone and everyone looking at you like, yeah, you know your shit, right? You're like, yeah, I know. It. That, that, that there hampers your football, man. It, you know it really, go on, you know what? But let me finish. But I honestly yeah, feel like um, my least impressive players this season has to be Daniel James. Go on, Ems, as you're saying. 
Do you know, so, so, you know what, sorry to interrupt. Do you know what, yeah, I actually forgot about him, you know. That's how I know I don't read him. But um, I think, I personally think Marshall's been terrible. And I forgot about Daniel Day until you mentioned Marshall's been horrible. <laughs> like, this is a season that I have to forget. Marshall was terrible. Like, I know that, because the thing for me, everything that, that, that everyone knows Daniel Day shit, he shouldn't be at Man United yet. But Martial has been terrible. Like five goals, is it five goals in what 40 games 30, or something like Is it 30 something or whatever? No, yeah, but my Marshall has been in inj- injured, so I don't think he's played about 30 games this season. He's been injured in and out. But wait, let me get some Premier League stats because I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, wait, let me look. Sorry, let me let me look. While, while, while he's looking, I'm, I'm look, let me pass it on to you why before he comes back with the Marshall. Um, who has been your least impressive player this season? I would say then at James. DJ being the less impressive players because I understand what I'm saying. Mattel did not score goals when he played in the big in the in the beginning of the season. But let's remember he did make assists. He got a few assists from not scoring oh, goals. Yeah? I found it. But Daniel James haven't done anything. His only assist that I can remember he done is few, he actually got few assists, but the last one in the last game in the Premier League that was brilliant. But why wait to the end of the season for you to do something spectacular? Uh-huh. So if if I was to see that week in week out, I would have said okay. But Daniel James has to be my less impressive player, and but- second would be Mattel. But Mattel did score goals and got few assists in his greatest season, like last season. But he did get few assists and score goals, so he's way much better than. Plus injury as well, he plays better than Daniel James. Let me just get these comments in because guys are flowing with it. We've got Darren who said Fred and Matic in terms of what we're just talking about. Passion Merchant says least impressive Marshall or Williams. James but Matic cool, did, did not play. <laughs> <laughs> Still, that's his, play. that's his opinion. You can't, you can't shoot a man down for his opinion. But I'm just saying, Matic did this not is play this his opinions at the end of the but day. But he did not play. <laughs> but, no, 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 but, no, 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 no. Look at his point. He said, change my mind before you have a go at him. <laughs> you know, change my mind. You know, mine is Williams. You've got Passion Merchant that says, sell James and try Ahmed and Pelletri as backup. Red Tented um, View says, he and Lindelof needs to get cut this summer. James, as well, passionate merchant says, James is the type of guy to sleep with a nightlight and teddy bear and just <laughs> seems scared. No, we just, no, honestly speaking, that is the truth. That is the truth. But yes, and of course, passion fruit, passion merchant says, Marshall played 36 games, no competition. All right, then that, uh, David De Gea hasn't been great this season. And of course, we ain't winning titles with the striker putting up these numbers. Marshall's been turned. Turned on the whole season. We got Patrick Fritz says James cost 15 million for a reason. I understand. Akil P says least impressive player this season has to be Marshall from scoring yeah. 20 goals to being absolutely poor. Yeah. We know what That's we've true. been getting from James. Expectations matter. You know, I know what I expect from James. That's the reason why. <laughs> and Passion Merchant says that I don't know Marshall's best position. I think he's not too fit footed enough to be a playmaking winger. He has not brave enough to, he has not been brave enough to be a striker and should have kept lukaku 100 percent. and then we've got down saying i'm waiting for the call up to the united team and i'm 38 <laughs> he's waiting for his call up but yes ems as you were saying about marshall no uh in the premier league 22 appearances yeah yep four, four goals three assists That's what you expect from uh, the centre midfielder or centre back. Well, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> I wait. Um, I'm gonna say I've mi- I've missed a lot of this show. But I feel like we spoke about Villarreal, how dead all these. No, no, we 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 didn't. We're not looking at the game, man. That that there. Oh. Is, no, we we, we go skip that. This is the season review, man. Oh, um, that's done. Okay. You, you did, you did, you did in the man match reaction. You did come on and express your feelings, so it's okay, oh, man. Yeah, it's okay. Like, 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 we don't want to get ourselves, us, man, in fact, back into no. the feeling of Villarreal again, man. Oh, Otherwise, we'll be here for two hours talking about Villarreal and then getting <laughs> oh, straight sorry, into guys. the match review. But let's move it on to another part, of course. 
player of the year for Manchester United, you know, so far, my opinion, it's got to go to one man, the one that's got the most goals, the most assists, you know. Although, you know, I can question his performances in, in the big games and certain games, giving the ball away. No, Darren knows who I'm going to say. You know, he already said it like Bruno Fernandes, I think. Player of the year, Bruno Fernandes has to be. It's definitely my player of the year, you know. The impact he's brought into the squad, amazing, you know. Um, he's taken us from where we were before down there to just a bit up, you know. And think that he had that impact from February all the way to the end of last season. And to do it this season, showing people that, rah, you know what, man's the real deal in terms of getting these numbers, you know. I may not give you the best in terms of 90 minutes, but I get my jobs done, you know. I get my jobs done. So my opinion, my player of the year for Manchester United has to go to Bruno Fernandes, definitely. And again, before that, we've got a few people that say not impressed with Alex Tellers too. Lots of hype when he came in. The only good thing with, with, when his rival was the improvement of Luke Shaw. I just think that Alex Tellers has been unlucky, you know, because when he's played, he hasn't played badly. And he, and he showed qualities, especially with whipping the balls in and that stuff. So his dad's got a couple of assists. We've got Passion Merchant that says, of course, Bruno Fernandes, of course, player of the year. We've got Akil P that says Bruno Fernandes. And Darren is also saying that Bruno needs to captain this team like Cantona did, which is true. I believe he's the captain in my eyes. Player of the year for you, Amok? I would say Bruno, because you just said it all. In the club, that's what you look for. I know Luke Shaw did well. He had great numbers this season. But we expected that, like, um, our, um, Darren said we should, ex um, we should, ex expectation counts. We expected, um, um, um Luke Shaw to do that. Bruno came in last season, started in madness. People were like, oh, he just came in half of the season. It was Corona, Corona. But we started the whole fresh season. he done the same thing, even more. So in my point of view, he should have won the player of the season for the club itself, just because he actually like broke rec they break few records. Like doing playing the numbers that he got for United in his first in the first season and that for me, Bruno, you can't take that away from Bruno. He's the talent. He's a very good talent. Like you mentioned, he's all like 90 minutes and that beautiful. But he gives you a lot of Beautiful moment within the 90 minutes. Yes. Yeah, I hear you. And what about you, Ems? What about you? Um, I would agree. I wouldn't I, I don't think performance has been great, but when you got the numbers, people it, football's now stat stats based, isn't it? So sure. <laughs> you can't argue with his numbers. So we'll go with Mr. Bruno Fernandez. Okay, so that's Bruno definitely for most of everyone are saying that people in the comments as well. We got the guys in the comments saying, of course, it's got to be Bruno. You guys are saying it's Bruno. Definitely has to be Bruno, man. But yes, um, let, me do, let me just get what Patrick Merchant just said. Because we all can see he's not the most graceful number 10, like an Ozil or Ronaldinho or Silva, but his strength or, or mentally, mentality positional awareness and aggression with this team value. Do apologize, guys. It's kind of hard to get to see sometimes with this reflection of the lights, with the shade. It ain't easy to read some of these things as well. So do do apologize if I'm looking straight like this. Bruno was right. Bruno was straight on my home shirt. And if I buy one next season, his name will be on it again. A great player and a rest and our new savior, which is true. He is our savior. I always say that. Now, uh, guys, we're going to move up to the next segment. This will be a bit emotional. Uh, this will sometimes, this I will say, this will get a bit touchy. If you are in, if you are an Oli in fan, you know, you might want to turn this off. If you are an Oli out fan, you know, you've got people here that we've got the Oli out brigade, you know, down there, Ems. <laughs> yes, I will be playing the devil advocate, you know, as I am the host, of course. I know, I know guys, we're going to be reviewing Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's this his performance this season and whether he should be given the chance to continue next season as well. We'll talk about that deep down 
as we get close to the end of that. And also whether he should be sacked for his performance so far after two and a half years of delivering nothing. Whereas people have seen memes. We've seen memes. We've seen me, I mean memes, yeah, of um Jose Mourinho, of LVG, David Moyes, and Oli Gonna Social in the picture collage with their achievements, with Oli out of all them being the one not winning a trophy. Mm -hmm. You know, you even saw um, ESPN extra time if you guys watch it, you know, really, really going hard on um, Oli saying that he has never been good enough to be Manchester United, how he should be sacked and how Manchester United are badly coached. I, I can't remember his name. He's got a Scottish accent. Oh, Craig I think he's played for Craig, Craig, Craig Burnley. Yes, he, he really, really gave it yeah. to him. And he said, I told you all, you know, he's a mediocre manager. You know, he's got that. Darren Fletcher as well. I mean, not Darren Fletcher, you've got um, Rio Ferdinand as well, slightly after the match was done, saying that um, sometimes the manager does play a part in terms of building that winning mentality. Trying to hit, but they weren't but going anywhere with it. That's hypocrisy, though. You can't hint. Go straight to the point. That's the that's the thing about British media. Not, that's they're, hypocrisy. They're not, they're not gonna hammer. They're not gonna hammer their ex player, bro. That's so how are you gonna change things if you keep showing sympathy to people? Be rebuilding. <laughs> we got Darren saying that all in in and out, shaking it all about. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, we went twenty six years without a league title. Then he got rid of Fergie. Yes, this I is a different. Times. This is different generation. Stop comparing what happened to Ferguson to what's happening now. Yeah, Chelsea cool. just won a month, he just won four or five the Premier League in, within a decade. Yeah, Chelsea spent money and won trophies. Yeah, if one just spend money and spend the right money, we would win trophies. We don't have to wait for Ferguson, like Ferguson be 20 something years. No, it's just spend the right money and the right people and put the right people around the club. So to get into the conversation, guys, uh, I didn't even, we didn't even get into it, but yes, yes. Only gonna search her season review. In my honest opinion, if I was to review Oli, if I was Ed Woodward sitting on the chair and sat him down and said, I looked at the competitions, because first of all, we have to start off with like, what was their the, 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 their expectation? What was the owners, the CEO's expectations for the season? Was it to Oh, Oli, just finish in the top four. Just make sure you get a top four finish. Just make sure we get a Champions League finish and we'll be happy with that. Oh, Oli, make sure you finish top four and also we won a trophy this season. You know, it depends on what Manchester United's um, board expectation was. If it's just finish, to finish top four, to them, achievement. If it's to finish top four and win a trophy, then they should be frowning their eyes and looking at him sideways. If it's to win the league or win two trophies, then yes, you sh they should be looking at him thinking, I might have to get rid of you because you never met expectations. In my opinion, overall, I think that it has been a poor season. Oli even said that it hasn't been a good season for him. Um, After the match, when he was interviewed, he said it's been a bad season because any season without winning any trophy isn't a good season. So he knows it himself that it's been a bad season for him. Um, In terms of him, in terms of making decisions, the substitutions and all stuff that plays a factor in my decision of him being poor this season. Last minute.com substitutions has been annoying to me, has been really grinding my gears. The McFred, the option to ignore Van der Beek, the Lindelof starting all the time instead of Eric Bay, which is of course debatable and questionable. You know, a lot of things says to me the fact that we can't break uh, a bank of two. Two fours, you know, as they will say, um, low block team, you know, two banks of fours. The fact that we can't create anything, the fact that we're terrible at passing, the fact that he allows these mediocre coaches because he he admitted that I don't do the coaching, and I was like, raw. So, but then you oversee the coaching, so you must be shit at overseeing coaching because that coaching standing shit. It's honestly shit, and if you're in charge of that. If you don't coach trip the players, but you are the one that can hire and fire these coaches, whether you have that um, that power or not, and if you're not seeing that, then it shows a level of incompetency that you can't see poor coaching. You know, the fact that you came in this team without your own coaching staff says it all. 
about the job that you took, the nature of your job, you, you probably is a yes man. But overall, in my opinion, I think Oli has had a bad season. He's had a bad season. He's been poor this season. Um, Coaching-wise, um, decision-wise, there have been some great wins. I don't want to lie to you. But in terms of when it really, really matters, getting everyone across the line, you know, the crep, you know, the champ the Europa League finals, but say the Champions League finals, I wish the Europa League finals, the semi-finals at Carabao Cup, the quarter finals at the Carabao Cup. This is where it tells me whether you're a top quality coach. Because top quality coach thrive in this situations where they know that I'm gonna get my tactics on right, spot on. This guy's gonna be playing. This is how I'm gonna take this team down and get it done. But he doesn't have that. My opinion is that Oli has been shit this season and he's lucky right now to be getting a new contract, which he shouldn't be, which will, we, I will ask that question to you guys later on. Now, I'm going to pass it on to Ems first so he can get it out of his chest because he's always smiling. He's like, yo, I'm ready to... <laughs> <laughs> Let the thing go, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, listen, yeah. He's, a very good at, he's, a very, he's very good at speaking. But he's not very good at being a doer. Yeah. So for me personally, yeah, forget what happened in the Premier League, yeah. Just the that final in isolation. I'm not gonna go into it because we really spoke about it. Everything he done was a sackable offense. From waiting a hundred minutes to make a sub, yeah. That's a sackable offense. I'm sorry. So basically, man was basically in other words, man was playing like we are we are the, the, the minnows, yeah. Playing for pennies, bro. Even if we won the game on pennies, I still would have been embarrassed. The game should never have gone to pennies, not even gone to extra time. And for me, I just feel like he's had his cycle. His cycle hasn't worked. He needs to leave. How can he get another season where if a certain man get sacked for less, bro? Like, it don't make sense. And they've won more, they've won trophies, bro. And this guy. Give me nothing but cobwebs, bro. So why should you get enough? that? This is and this is the difference between Chelsea and us, yeah. I promise you, give two hoots to Frank Lampard. You don't care, blood. Man, sack the legend, bro. Don't you fool? And they're six months in, blood. My one champion league, but yeah, we're gonna reward failure. That's the difference, bro. We reward failure, and Chelsea don't. That's why they were lifting that big trophy, and us were flipping. Silver medal in the European League, bro. We couldn't do it, bro. I'm sorry. Far as I'm concerned, all right, cool. He steadied the ship, yeah, yeah, cool. We got second, but man didn't bring a trophy. And even if we won the Europa League anyway, I still would have said we should even be there in the first place. But we're there, so we should win it. So for me, his cycle's done. Get him out the door and get somebody else that can win me trophies. I'm fed up of people coming telling me, oh, if Oli gets sacked. <laughs> out there, I think Oli's the be the best we could get since sliced bread. No, 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 dead, bro. Oli is not good enough. Like, get him out the club. He's had enough. I've had enough. Like, people need to separate the legend from the manager. He is out of his depth, and if he was to get sacked tomorrow, bro, there's no League One club hiring this man, bro. Not even a Championship club, a League One club. Yeah, bro. These Man United fans, if you really think, yeah, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is going to win you a Champions League and a Premier League, yeah, you're a, really <laughs> land. You're a cuckoo land, bro. Cuckoo, bro, think about it, yeah, it's even harder now, yeah. You've got a flipping, you've got a challenge, Klopp, Pep, and now Tuchel, bro. So we're fighting for fourth, bro. Not, 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 not Shoot. second. Fourth. Shoot. Shoot. Fourth. And I just, and you know what, yeah, I just feel like you should be Shoot. because come next, Come next season, yeah, I've already inspired, yeah. Come next mm -hmm. season, yeah, bro. If he starts off bad, bro, the heat is going to be turned hot like a cooker, bro. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to say. You don't deserve a contract. That's me. Really... <laughs> <That's it. laughs> that's that's what's your opinion of Oli's season so far? Mediocre. <laughs> Thank you. Straight. Thank you. Not good enough. <laughs> Not good enough. Not good enough. Thank you. And Say, repeat, can I ask Ems, Ems? Can I ask you and Patrick one question? Yeah. Yes, Are we a big club? Uh, I'll oh. be very honest with you. 
we haven't been a big club since the likes when Ferguson left. We've been a mediocre club, not spending wisely. The infrastructure of the club in terms of recruitment has been really poor. Um, the fact that we've got shit coaches says it all about whether being a top club. That's it starts off with that. Our training pitch as well needs um exam. Re, re, what what's it called? Um, fixing, revamp. you know, revamp. revamp. Our stadium needs revamp. Um, the CEO doesn't care about football, so how do we don't have football people in charge uh, that care about football? We we're not a big club anymore. We've been finishing outside the top four most of the times, not playing in the Europe in the Champions League. We've always been so far. We've been playing in the Europa League since since we've been around in the last eight months. I mean, eight last eight years. We've been playing in the Europa League. We've been a Europa League team at best. Honestly sure. speaking, so we haven't been a top club. Ends. What about you? I think we are. We're, we've got an elite name, but in terms of in these positions, I say no. We have a mediocre CEO that rules failure, and we have a poor coaching staff that are not worthy to be Man United coaches, bro. So that being said, we are elite club. But poor people at our club making decisions. So the reason the I, reason I ask that is just yeah. to distinguish our club with other clubs, right? And you got yeah. Real Madrid, you got um, yeah. um Bayern Munich, you've got yeah. PSG, you got yeah. Barcelona, you've yeah. got let me just come back home. We've got Chelsea, we've got Man City, yeah. and I'm also saying Everton because I've Hold on. Pass, wait, wait. Pass, pass, Celtic, even Celtic, bro. Celtic, they will not accept this. Like Everton got Everton, I've seen the progress from where they started with this new manager that came in, what Kuma started and what this other new manager done. I've seen it. Yeah. But with yeah. us, I haven't seen anything. You just yeah. said that. Oh, they they made a meme about um how many trophies all these managers won. As much as people were saying they might they win nothing, but he won the community shell. Yeah, he lifted something. Yeah, for eight months. Yeah, and you've been the manager that spent more time than any other manager, play more games uh, than any, any other manager. There have been money been spent on you more than yeah. every other manager. So why yeah. didn't you win a trophy? If we talking yeah. about you saying that you you did wonderful, let me see, you had a fantastic season, or you did you had like a very good season without winning yeah. trophy. You should have done something. If we, like, yeah. if we do in trophies, we should have seen our style of play change. Because I know within three months, on um, Poch changed Tottenham philosophy when he got to Tottenham. Club, club within six months, he changed Liverpool philosophy when he got to Liverpool. Even though they struggled, but he changed the philosophy. What's only changed since we lost Ferguson or since we lost um Jose? What has it changed? So for me, vibes, it's had vibes. it's been a very it's been for me it's been the poorest manager among all this lot. I actually think they might did better than him within eight months. Because at least he lost games. We knew the club got to do something about him. The club did. I've called all these other clubs. Should have all got elite managers. We have got someone. He's got no credential, no yeah. backup. Nothing. Yeah. When I, I remember I said to you guys the other day, when I came to this country as a kid from Africa, one th two things that I was impressed by in this country was people standing in queue and CVs to go work in that, the way it's strict. So even as that, yeah, I think it's hypocrit hypocritical for me to say that these days because what's all he got for him to be sitting at that managing Manchester United I know the media in this country might not want to say because these he's are got, buddies. He, he's got legendary status. That's what he's got. But that's not good United. enough. That's what he's got. Gattuso, <laughs> goes, Gattuso got he's, sacked. Even, even the legendary status to me is a bit questionable because I have never heard a legend that, came off that, the bench. that, that, that comes off the bench of schools goals and not being the number one. That, I, I thought legends are for those people that are number one that score bare goals and become the top goal scorers and yeah. beat them. That's what I thought a legend was. I, I, I would agree that... Um, Oli is probably a, a club icon, yeah, an icon, 
True. At best, but a legend is is a bit too far. You know? A legend is Eric Cantona. A legend is George Best. best. A legend is Duncan Edwards. A, le a legend is Ryan Giggs. Giggs. A legend is it's Sir Rooney. Alex Ferguson. Top goal scorer all time. You can you can throw Rooney in because he will be in the post, name of Manchester United folklore. Post goals. Them Gary, Gary Neville, Neville. But, no, but even that, I will call them icons, you know, them Gary Neville, club icons. And then you've got your favourite personnel, like them Marcus Rashford and Bruno Fernandes and, and them, them icons as Cristiano Ronaldo, I believe. But legend is a big thing to it's say. It's a big you thing, know? definitely a big thing to say. Yeah, even Darren is saying, I'm a legend. You know, if we're going to call a legend, I'm all legends. We're all legends. We're all legends. We're all legends. We're all legends. Big up, see you, Darren. Hey, big up, Darren, man. Just knows me the most, yeah? Imagine, they say Liverpool's had a poor season. But we have progress and we're second, yeah? Liverpool ended the season third. Yes, yes. Four points or five points behind us. Five, five points. Five points behind us, and, yeah. and but they had worse season. Yeah, I think they were they, they had the better season than us this season because they struggled. Five. We started struggling, like everyone Spice said, but yeah. they, it was the manager in the ways because whatever we went through, mm -hmm. you should have done better. You, the, your choices, the you, the team that you started in few games that you lost, that's shit. We saw the way we played in 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 in, in the in, in the only um 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 um, um, um was it called preseason game that we played against Aston Villa. We saw that game. Yeah. I was scared from that point there. But you know what? One thing I have to say: big up um, right interview, and of course, I'm reading the comments. At the end of the day, you have to say that Oli hasn't really been back in the transfer market to show um, he's and to implement his whatever he's trying to implement his football his coaching or style because because if it's like that then then if he can't implement i think if he can't implement his style on the current players and he's waiting for better players then we're, we're going to be a team that's just based on individual brilliance and we already are a team yeah, that's based on that. individual what brilliance. style have you seen that might so not be far good man what style have you seen so far I haven't seen anything. Just vibes. What's no, that? No, 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 no. This guy football, been given two, two and a half years. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's been given two and a half years. What style have you seen? What he? I can tell you. Even if I have Ronaldo Messi in all department, yeah, with under Oli, or Ronaldo Messi look average. I I think I bet if and he he, individual he individual to... brilliant. That's what we see. Yeah, that's true. If he went to manage Man City, you do not do a good job there. Nope. Bruh, nope. He ain't doing shit, bro. I know for a fact, yeah, if Scott Parker come to our club and he went to Fulham, he'll do worse than what Scott Scott Parker done at Fulham. And Scott Parker will do way better than what Oli done. I think Scott Parker would want us to open you, bro. That's how vexed I am. Football is all about preparation. The yeah. FA prepare. The FA prepares um, um 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 for every single Premier League games they play. The officials, um, um security, everything. Only you came to you came to a job without pr protection, without preparation. You did not bring anyone else with you. You came on your ones, yeah, to come take over a club called Manchester United. I never seen that person that came to Manchester United on the ones to come take over the club. Mourinho did not. Van Gaal did not. Um, even David Moyes did not. Just ye, there's something wrong. There is definitely something wrong that they need to fix ASAP. You cannot build a club or build what's been broken the way Manchester United are doing it. That's the wrong method. And with that said, I don't see us progressing going further anytime soon. Okay. So, like, I'm going to ask the guys in the comments as well, and I'm going to ask you guys as well. Um, should Oli, so far since he's been here two and a half years and has not achieved anything. And the other managers that we've had have in within those times, and some only has six months, you know, and we'll still end up winning the community shield. You know, whether you like it or trophy or not, it's a trophy on his CV. He's gonna he's gonna be on his CV that I won the community shield. It's there, you know, he gets a medal for it and he can show it. So it is a trophy, you know. Yeah. Should Oli be in this job after two and a half years, you know, without no trophy, should it should should he be the guy that will take should take us next season? Because we've seen some changes. We've seen um um Allegri go to Juventus, Perlo getting sacked. We've seen um, Zidane leave his role and free as well. We've got Allegri who left Intel just winning 
um, the Copper, um, the, the Scudetto, sorry, and, and looking to go to Real Madrid. We also got um, apparently Poch himself saying that, raw like, I want to come out of PSG. And he's been in talks with Tottenham to go back. So, so far, guys, let me know. Do you think Oli should be in this job now? Should, or he should, be, should, he, should, he should just continue? I'm going to start with VMs. Should he be in his job? Because I don't think he should be, if you want to know my opinion. I don't think he should post be in his job. We should, his position should be, you know, up for grabs right now, up for discussion, his future right now, to be honest with you. If we, if we were an ambitious club, you know, any ambitious club such as Real Madrid, if this has gone on for two and a half years, not even, just two years or one and a That's half long. seasons, That's sometimes long. six months of nonsense, Yep, they get rid of you. And look at Chelsea right now. Um, they got rid of Lampard, uh, a club legend. Oh, okay. uh, they got rid of Lampard. Uh, I've already passed. Ask me that question again, please. <laughs> Should Oli be M's. in his job right now? <laughs> after after everything. I'm sorry. Yeah, he wants to laugh. <laughs> let, me start, let, me start, let me start this now. All right. All right. Let me name some clubs for you. Juventus. <laughs> Barcelona. Real Madrid, Celtic, bro, Chelsea, Man City, Bayern. By I said that. All right, Bayern. If I forgot, there's no way none of these man, their managers, none, no way them clubs will allow a manager to be in charge for two and a half years and not win anything. So you know what my answer is. My answer is no. He don't deserve no contract. He should have been out the door when I woke up in the morning the next day after that horrible day in the Europa League final he don't deserve fuck all he needs to leave he needs to be sacked end of yes end of he, he feels like Ems feel like Oli shouldn't really be in this job anymore his future should be on a discussion we've got Passion Merchant we've got he's saying that Oli deserves six months at least even me I feel like Let's give him some time, you know. I honestly would like to see him go, but I know the truth. Like Tyler. I know Manchester United. Tyler. I know I know my club. My club is not going to sack him. You're making They're M's not going to get you're making him. M's move. Look at M's, his eyes. <laughs> eyes. Me. Oh my god. Guys, look what you're doing. Because he said M's. six months. Yeah, but, but you can at least give him at least till Christmas, at least we'll see what happens when he gets these players Christmas. in. To, to at least you love you love uh, listen guys if sympathy he off, don't work no no we're not it's not sympathy i just know my club my club won't sack him yeah they, but they're we, happy with this they're happy with the achievement so at least give him a couple of more months and see um I, I will give him three months after he gets his signing because i believe they will go they might i don't believe they'll go ham something says that they might he go is ham a poor manager <laughs> he's not a good manager he shouldn't be a Manchester United in the first place. Uh, Why are we talking about Oli being at the club, Oli being this? And not and understand what you're saying. Uh, the owners are gonna keep him there. We know our club, but mm -hmm. if we keep saying this, it's always gonna be the same thing. We should make our voices heard, yeah. If the frontiers are scared to say it, us doing what we do, go make our voices here, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oli does not deserve to be the manager at Manchester United. Him being there, they're stretching it, yeah? He's not good enough to coach this place. And we've got very good talent at this club, yeah? I've seen very young kids. He's doing exceptional. With Oli at this club, these kids, I don't know, they're all going to end up being average players and leave the club side for these mediocre clubs. We need a proper manager, someone that knows his job, someone that when they get given a job comes with all the tools. It's like you, it's like you handyman, yeah. My my, my sink broke, couldn't it? And that cool just come fix my sink for me, bro. If he came to my house without no tools, how are you gonna fix my sink? <laughs> no, you tell me how are you gonna fix my sink if he came to my house without no um, tools? That's what only did to us. And we oh. for the two years and a half now we're still listening to this. <clears throat> All he needs to go, no contract, nothing. He needs to go. Okay, okay. All he needs to go. I've got Darren that says a no, but they will give him till X. Minister. So Darren thinks he shouldn't be in this job. You know, no, he shouldn't really be. But they'll give him till X. Minister. You know, if you've got Cupid, there's no point in us discussing if he's getting a sack. He is not. This is why they have to back him. Otherwise, next season, it's all right. Off. Absolutely true. They have to back him. They're not going to sack him. If you're not going to sack the guy and you want him to do well, back him with the peas. You get me? 
And of course, what Red Tinted Views that says all the team whose team has been backed with the players they need that they need have won titles. Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City. We have seen them lots get heavily invested in the problematic areas. Yeah, 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 it's true. You so lot we're not, we're not in the right areas. No, you so. lot forgot one thing. These mm -hmm. teams that you lot mentioned got elite managers. Managers that's well known. Yep. We've got a someone he is big up, big up red interview. So, so I don't understand what I don't understand up. what this is. We out of all the top clubs here, yeah, Manchester is the weakest link. And the only reason I'm saying Manchester is the weakest link, United is the weakest link, it's based on the manager. Mm -hmm. If all other clubs got elite managers which attract players, they got style of football, they got blueprint. What have we got? We, 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 we got um, um counter attacking football freestyle FC freestyle. Freestyle FC, that's what we are. We're freestylers. And yeah. we play terrible rap against Villarreal. Rap battlers, you know. We can't even beat Villarreal. But guys, let's let, let, let's move it on to the couple because we, we are one hour and 12 minutes deep in and we want to wrap it up for these guys as they're getting tired and they're probably yawning right now thinking, oh, this has no. been going on for long. But guys, man, what, 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 what next for Manchester United? You know, what next in terms, where do we go from here in terms, what do we improve on? Like, who, who, who do we sign to make things better? You know, you know what is what is next for Manchester United? Because I know signings are needed. It would be nice to get a proper coach. You know, I would like. I love. To, I would love to hear breaking news. Manchester United have signed top coach from this person, from this, and top defensive coach, and top what's called ball retention coach from X Y from Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Blah 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 blah. This and that first. Then I was like, that's a good sign. And then after that, it's about signing the likes of a right winger, CDM, and also a centre back. And also a backup striker. Or, or no, a main striker. We need CDM in, 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 in the centre park. That's what we need. If you give Cavani, uh, if you uh, give uh, if you're uh, giving uh, Cavani an extension, that just let you know we're not signing. I'd rather sign Sancho right now than send Harry Kane. Yeah, but the thing about Cavani's extension, he shouldn't be main striker because he's a he's an injury prone striker. We should supposed to be signing someone to for him to be playing back up too, you know. Well, you see where the club always gets it wrong. Instead of you going for the kill, you're always settling for less. And when you settle for less, do you know what happens? You always get the pinch of settling for less because the quality and worth what you're paying for. Big up a QP. I said Sancho Varane and and the CDM hopefully rice get me rice. You see, Thank I do you. feel rice goes with anything, you know. Rice banks with anything. <laughs> anything, like. trust me. So I get that. That was, that's what we need. The CDM is a priority, definitely, man. Trust. Yes. We got Darren that says I should be the main striker before Cavani. <laughs> Darren's out here killing me right now. Big ups to you, Darren. Yes, but no, 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 definitely. Um, I was going to go up to you, Ems. Um, what do you think is next? What does Manchester United need to do to get to where they need to get? Firstly, sack the manager. Get a, get, <laughs> get a, a, a coach that's got pedigree. Yeah, so maybe Zidane. Then I think we need to go... Uh, we need to get players out the door first. So we need to get Mata, uh, Phil Jones, Matic. Daniel James... Matic, all these men out the door, and then we need to start filling the gaps. So right winger, defensive mid. Uh, I think they should be the priority because right now we signed Eric Bay to a new contract, so that means for me we ain't gonna buy a centre back. So I think we might end up just buying two players as uh, a, 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 a defensive mid and a right winger. And we ain't gonna buy a striker for this season because of we got Cavani, but you never know. My United might surprise us. I got some secretive deal for Harry Kane or or Sancho, but I, like I said, I, I repeat, sack the manager, get a right winger and a defensive midfielder, and then I think we can make some sort of like trophy charge, whether it's the FA Cup or or title challenge in the Premier League. Do you know what I'm saying? But but let me be realistic. So Oli's gonna stay. So. That's the case. We need to get a right winger, a, set, a, a, a defensive mid, and I would hope a centre back. But I doubt it. Man, it's too much money. So maybe we're just gonna buy two players. But if we get some people out the door, maybe we can free up some funds and some wages. So we'll see what happens. 
Big up passion through that says I know I know Marshall gets a lot of love from the brothers, but he ain't elite. No, he gets a lot of love from the brothers though, but a lot, some of the brothers are telling him that he ain't good, he ain't elite, which I agree with you. He hasn't been consistent, man. That's one thing. I love Marshall, but he hasn't been consistent, you know. You know if you put him on the left wing, you know what I mean. We got obviously big up Kyle Wayne. He says Ollie is not good, you know. <laughs> he, he got so vexed, he needs to go up and comment. <laughs> 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 love the fashion team but yes guys that is what you're trying to say now we have come close to the end of the show it's my favorite part which is called question time and i'm going to ask obviously a random question but this is to do with the managers so this will be a good one to end the show with guys with the season review so guys rank these managers from fourth being the least worst manager that we've had since Ferguson left, <laughs> and first being the worst out of all of them. So we have Oli, we have Moise, we've got LVG, and we've got Jose Mourinho. Like I said, rank them from fourth to first. Guys in the comment, get yourself involved, as I will put your comment on the show as well, just to get this so people can see who's commented and who's made their decision and their rankings as well. So we've got, again, we've got Oli, Moyes, LVG, and Jose. Ranked fourth, fourth being the least worst manager out of all of them, and first being the worst. I'm going to kick it off, of course. So Oli, sorry, I'll just kick wait, it off. Wait. Sorry, sorry. So Oli, fourth being the least worst manager out of them all, and first being the shittest out of all of them. Yeah? All right, go on, you start. Cool. I'm going to start it off, yeah? In fourth place, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, because I'm going to go with, because the, the way I want to rank this is how I feel about them, what they've done, the football they've implemented, and sometimes what they want. So I'm not going to go about, like, because this guy won the most, he's, he should be top. I'm going to go with what I saw on the pitch, how they treat the players, how they coach the team, you know, the football they played and, and et cetera, and how I felt toward the end. So, in terms of the fourth least worst manager that I believe we've had, I'm going to start off in fourth position. I'm going to start off with um, Louis Van Gaal because I love, I like his football. I like the Louis Van Gaal's um, total football, you know. But it was a bit 20th century instead of being 21st century because he he tried to emulate, he did em emulate Bjorn's Christ style of football, which he in, helped implement it at Barcelona. Also helped implement that by a minute before Pep came and pushed it. So done the same thing at Ajax as well, you know. But came to us to give us his philosophy and we 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 messed that up. We messed that up, man. The philosophy that he had was what we needed in terms of um, having a successful 4-3-3 four, three, three formation, you know. Possession-based football is what we needed. But it's just the fact that the players that he signed, again, I believe he was given his second and third choice option because I knew he wanted top, top, quality players at that time there but the way Manchester United was running we saw the first we saw the truth when it came to Manchester United in terms of how they sign players and etc that's where it really started from it started off with Van I mean we started off with David Moyes only able to sign Fellaini but then it just started showing more um third place and I'm gonna have to go with David Moyes you know six months of hell I did hate it yeah so he's third he's third place David Moyes I thought he was shit, honestly speaking. He was shit for the six months. It was the worst. I didn't watch match a day. I hardly watched match a day during that time, bro. Like, the football's trash. But hey, it is what it is, isn't it? He couldn't sign players. He only was able to sign Fellaini. Um, second place, it's going to be interesting now. I'm going to have to go with Jose Mourinho, you know? Ah, for the fact that I never wanted Jose Mourinho, the moment we signed Jose Mourinho, I told these guys, you guys are happy because he's trophy Mourinho, yeah, because we're going to win trophies. I'm happy, you're happy that. But in the next two to three years' time, you're going to hate him. You're going to hate his football. You're going you're gonna to start unrest in the club, you know. There's going to be negativity in the club. He's going to start trouble with certain players. You're going to see it. And it two years down the line, it came to truth, you know. And I was like, huh, you see, I was right. But... Josh Mourinho, his press conferences, the fact that he said that he knocked out Manchester United, he thought was so shit. The beef between him and Pogba, huh? That's my boy, you know. It's like if he beefed my mom, I'm beefing you in it. 
Like that's how that's how, that's how much of my boy Pogba is, you know. We're close like that, you know. We don't know each other, but that's the relationship we have right there. <laughs> yeah, it? that's the reason no, why Jose no. has to get second worst. But the worst out of all of them is our current manager. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I don't care if you're only in, if he's a legend or not. What I've seen so far is the same thing I've seen with Jose Mourinho. You know, defensive football, but a bit more free. You know, a bit more free counter-attacking football. You know. Um, focusing on the op opposition and focusing on ourselves. That's what Jose Mourinho was doing, you know. The fact that we play McFred, two defensive DM, says it all. He continued Jose Mourinho's formation and just polished his football with a bit of freedom, you know. True. No trophies in two and a half years as well. Um, the football, like I said, he's tactically not good enough. It's tactically astute, you know. He is not good enough, you know. I don't know where we got this guy from. I don't know where we got him from, mode, but he shouldn't be. I'll be honest with you guys. Have to ask yourself the question and look at yourself in the mirror. You know he's not good enough because if I ask Ollie in guys, fans, and some of them I ask them, be honest with you. Do you think we can win anything with this guy? You're gonna say no, but he's a legend, though. We should give him a chance, but that's that shouldn't be a reason. Um, take your heart out, you know. Take your hand out your heart, you know. I have to say, and just think with this. He's not good enough. He's never been good enough. He would never be at Real Madrid. He would never be at Chelsea. He would never be at Liverpool. He would never be at even Ajax or even a Dortmund or Borussia Dortmund or by Leverkusen, you know. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? He would never be the manager of Everton. Let's be real. Or Tottenham. Tottenham wouldn't even look at him. So why do we look at this guy? True. That's my ranking, guys. Before I get to move on to you guys, let me just get some of these guys ranking in. I've got Darren who's saying that Mourinho's number number four, free LBG, Moise number two, Oli number one. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Sunny Demir was a great was great until he started playing bad. You got Darren four. Is he saying again? He's repeating it. He's so everyone can see in the comment. Like, get me. Kill P. Let's start it off again. Let me start from. He said Moyes was his worst manager, number one. See, two Oli. Yes. So Oli even makes it either top one or top two right now. <laughs> Van Hal, three. He was onto something with the football and the philosophy. Boring at time. Should I have backed him for one more window? Fourth had to be Mourinho in the, the worst, man. Two Michael trophies. Walker. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. I'm going to move it on to Amok, man. Amok. What about you, man? What you rank yours? Of course, my fourth manager is always going to be LVG. His philosophy was something that I actually did like, and I wish we kept it. And I would say my third would be. I felt like there was too much pressure on him. He didn't deserve the job itself at the time, but he didn't give him chance either. So I would say Moy is my third. And Mourinho would be my third. Yeah. Mourinho would be no Mourinho, no, no, no David Moy is my second. Mourinho would be my third. <laughs> Mourinho would be my third. I'm trying not to mistake the count the numbers. Mourinho would definitely be my third, just because he won me trophies. But you you said something like I can tell any Manchester fan that I relate to. You. When we signed him, I was happy about it. But Lord knows how much I hate Mourinho. And one thing that I regret, if you ask me as a Manchester fan, I wish we never had Mourinho. I just wish we never had him. I don't care if we didn't win Europe or we'd have been none of them trophies they won with us. I don't care about them trophies. Just wish we didn't have that type of person in the club. And the last goal would be Oli. Like, you've been given more chance. You've, been, you've spent more money than you than all these other managers, but you don't the least. So for me, not good enough. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, just waiting for Ems. Ems, you just come back in time. Yeah, man. It's your turn, bro, to rank yours. Fourth, fourth is the best in it. Yeah. Fourth, fourth is the least worst, oh, and first worse, is sorry. the worst. Fourth. Yeah. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, least worse is not even good. Better. <laughs> bad. Least worse. <laughs> least worse, yeah. Uh, LBG, 
I think it was on time, but he didn't have the players to implement his style. But then True. he was given so much money. So he should have done a little bit better, I would say. But I did think of all the coaches we've had, I think he was the one closer to what what fits our philosophy to of young players coming through. And I felt like he was beating the big teams playing his style of football. Like I think that game against Liverpool at Anfield, that's probably I think I don't think we've ever done the game at Anfield in our life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's true. Come and he done it. So I'll give yeah. him that. Um so Mourinho, because obviously he did win the trophies to back it up, but he was toxic, man. Toxic. I, I was just, you know what? I didn't want him, but I just wanted him to win us a trophy, then he can piss off and then we can get someone else to carry on. But I just didn't work like that. But uh yeah, but I, I mean, I don't know what else I can say because right now, is it David Mo- David Moyes or Oli is very tough one? But I would probably say, in a weird way, I feel like Oli was given. I'm not Oli, sorry. Moyes was given the champions, and Man finished us with seventh, and I think that's true. So I'm gonna say I'll go Oli then Moyes. Moyes has been the worst, you know. So, so it's David Moyes. It's it's, it's a battle between David Moyes yeah, and yeah, Oli yeah, Solskjaer yeah. so far, you know. But I think I think is it Oli just edging it because I I, I had Oli first, you had Oli first, and that, no, had I, Moyes I, first, and also and Darren had Oli as well. I had Moyes second, you know. So Oli's edging. Oh, you had Moyes second. No, yeah. no, you had Oli first, and I had Oli first, and Darren. No, had I had Moyes first. third actually. Third Oli of, third, yeah. Yeah, Marini, just, Marini second, Oli first. So yeah. in in this whole conversation, I, f- I believe that Oli's Oli has it. been the worst in terms of on the average score. Well, guys, first of all, like to say thank you for watching as it has come to the end of the show. Of course, you guys stopped through it for the hour and twenty eight minutes. Remember to smash that like and also remember to share and also remember to subscribe to get people onto the next show. Of course, guys, you can catch me again. Friday, 9 p.m. for the weekly bulletin covering all the latest news and events surrounding Manchester United. Of course, like a news round with my own personal opinion added to it. Just before we leave, we'd like to ask the guys, plug the guys in to find out where you can find them. So I'm going to start off with Amok. Where can the people find you? Oh, you can find me on Instagram, prettyflaco underscore 610. I mean, you got shout big up Darren again. I'm gonna have to give you a big up again, again, because you kept big up, the whole conversation big up Darren. live. Yeah, I mean, shout Darren out for me good. again, definitely, definitely, definitely. And and where can we find you, Ems? Where can they find you? On the gram, ems dot w dot on the gram. Like I said, guys, of course you can find me on this, of course, beautiful page, this beautiful channel. Mondays, nine p.m. Next week will be a bit of a hold. Of course, we resume once the Euro starts. Of course, we'll have the international version of the catch-up. You know, it's international matches, Euros. So we'll be talking international teams. And if we've got any news, we'll mention that transfer, we will, we will get, we'll talk about it. Definitely. And of course, of course, you can find me on Friday 9 p.m. again. Remember, guys, who are watching on Twitch, you get this, you get, of course, the, the, two, the two live streams, which is the catch-up and also the weekly bullet. And the match reaction, if you're on Twitch, you're going to have to come to YouTube to watch that because that's only exclusive to YouTube. And, of course, guys, last but not least, remember to subscribe, remember to smash oh, that like button, remember to share. You can find me and follow me the official Instagram account of Ready Night TV, which is Ready Night TV 1, and also the official t- in TikTok account which is Reginite TV, and also you can follow my personal Instagram account, which is Ivorian underscore Spice. That's across the Twitter as well, and also the Snapchat. And of course, last but not least, my ladies, my ladies, as you always watch me to the end, and some of you guys pull off at some point, Remember to share the link to your ex-boyfriends. Remember to share the links to your current boyfriend. Remember to share the link to the guy, the guy that always buys you yeah. lunch at work, hoping that he will get some, but you be eating his food knowing that he will never get any. Remember to share the link to the guy that's been trying to move to you at the bus stop, 
of course. And you've told him so many times you've got a man. And because it's hurting him so much, he's told you that you're butters anyway. Remember to share the link to the guy that's been trying to move to you at the train station, asking you for your number. You told him countless of times I've got a man. But you know what he tells you? But we can be friends, though. But we can be friends, though, line. That's what he's been giving you. And also remember to... Share the link to the chicken shop man that's been always trying to give you a free wing, even though, even though you don't even get hot wings, you get chicken sometimes and a burger. He flings it in there, asks us for your number, you get me? But you gave him your Snapchat instead and he's, he's okay with that. Remember to also share the link to your dad's friends that's been looking at you up and down, licking their lips now that you're grown, now you've got, you're carrying this and you're carrying waste. And now they're telling you that my oh my, you have grown. This and when guy. you share them that link and you ask, and they ask you, What is this? Tell them that you found a man that can do it way <laughs> better than you. Me. And that's how I've ruined Spice Man. <laughs> As always, remember to keep it united and remember to keep it red united. And we are out. We will see you on Friday, guys. Peace out from Ems. Peace out for my.